My name is Jane Klebb, and I founded a group called Bold Nebraska, which is an advocacy group that works on property rights and water and other populist issues throughout the state of Nebraska. You know, the beautiful thing about the Keystone XL fight is that we have farmers and ranchers and climate advocates and tribal nations all at the same table working shoulder to shoulder. And I think I'm very, very lucky and fortunate that I had never worked on pipelines or climate change before. I think if I had, maybe I would have absorbed that this is a very daunting task, that there's no way a small group of people, you know, this unlikely alliance of farmers, ranchers, and tribes could beat a big oil corporation. But that never entered my mind. I saw something that was wrong and that they were a group of people that were going to be affected. So we went for it. Nebraska is not an oil state, we're an ag state. So the Ogallala Aquifer, the water was first and foremost for everybody. You know, second is property rights. To even think in America that a foreign corporation could come and tell a bunch of farmers and ranchers that they're gonna take their land through eminent domain for their private gain is literally unconscionable. I knew that people that we were bringing together worked with their hands. So we planted Ponca sacred corn for the first time in over 100 years in the path of the pipeline. We built a solar barn directly in the path to show anybody who thought about approving that pipeline that they would have to tear down a cultural identity of farmers and ranchers and clean energy if they wanted to build this pipeline. I think that if we didn't do those actions, people could have very easily just stayed in their silos of only talking about climate or only talking about property rights or only talking about sovereign rights. And all of these actions built trust among all of us and built this family, we call ourselves pipeline fighters, that nobody could break. It didn't matter how much money TransCanada offered the landowners or what tactics they used to try to paint us as, you know, extremists. We were a family and we were gonna stop the pipeline together. It's so important to march when you're in these fights, especially the landowners and people who've been in it on a daily basis have been doing this for almost eight years. It can get depressing and isolating. So when you're in the streets with people who you may have never met before and they're all fighting alongside you, it gives this like renewed sense of excitement knowing that, yeah, there's a lot of people who have our back. I'm very confident that we're going to stop the pipeline for the third time now because we've stopped it twice before. We're in front of the Public Service Commission. Uh, it's a very lengthy process. If we lose or TransCanada loses, we think the other side will appeal. And then we'll also fight this in court if the decision doesn't go our way around imminent domain. I've never thought we couldn't stop the pipeline. <laughs> it's not in my like sense of self to think that we would lose. I'm currently the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, and I often get from people like, why would you go into politics now? It is so toxic, you're not gonna get anything done. For me, this is the moment when we all need to be in politics, right? That we all need to start connecting the issues that we deeply care about to politics and to partisan politics, and not see the word partisan politics in a negative way, and be really proud as Democrats and red state Democrats to say and not whisper that we are a Democrat, that we believe in equality, that we believe that neo-Nazis are bad for our country, that we believe that rural broadband and property rights are critical issues in rural communities that we as Democrats are gonna stand up for. And we cannot have, although I love them all, the coasts making decisions for our party, that we actually do matter in middle America. And we have a lot to say about the policies that people in Washington, D.C. are voting on. And we need more people that have run grassroots groups to run for party leaderships. It's always this belief that we the people are at the heart of what's gonna get things done. And if we would just have an ounce of belief from the decision makers that we actually know what's going on, I think you would actually start to see real solutions to big problems in our country. Ha, 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 ha.